Hello. Hello, hello, look at you. <laughs> look at you. I'm clean. You're clean. Look at your hair. Oh, thanks. It's bouncy. Mm. Every now and then I do it. Well, you're doing it right. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> I have your guest here with us. Great. Oh, my gosh. I thought I was looking in a mirror for a second. Right. Right. He looks like me. <laughs> I got to unmute him. I think you're muted there, Greg. Oh, there, there you go. There you go. Great. You look like a younger me. You can't see me because I don't have a camera on this computer. Ah, got it. You're the you're the voice from the void there. Yeah. The voice from the void. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. How are we doing? Good. How are you? Good. Running around a bit on a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How um how do you say your wife's name? Soraya. Soraya. Yeah. I figured, but I didn't want to butcher it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we don't have any commercials. Um, Yet. <clears throat> in the middle. Anyway. <laughs> You're looking for the house? Yeah. <laughs> nice. A little subtle, uh, a little subtle uh, uh, in there. <laughs> you think I should have commercials? Well, I think so. Why not? Okay. Why shouldn't you? You're advertising your stuff? Well, I thought I had the one for the website at the end. Yeah. Did I put mm -hmm. it in the middle too? I, well, we got two. I got naturopathic Heather and I got uh, pipe, pipe. Oh, good. Here. Well, then that's good that those are going. Yeah. But we're not playing them during your show because you don't take commercial breaks. Yeah, I don't know if I can be organized enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's your show. It's up to you. But I'll work I, on it. I'll work on it. We'll work on it. <laughs> now, but I have been playing them on the station as a little as a little thing at even. Oh, thing. good. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm still waiting for the Facebook to go live here. Uh, we're okay. going to do Facebook live. Um, I'll let you know when it starts live. Okay. Facebook sometimes takes forever to get going. Like it's still a white screen. I think it's just the computer, obviously, but probably have to get a faster computer. But this computer doesn't have anything on it aside from what. Oh. <laughs> Good thing they phone is ringing. <laughs> you need that sign there. It says, please turn off your cell phones while in the studio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Good thing it came up then, right? Yes, perfect right? timing. Perfect. All right, come on, let's go. Turn on the page, you manage. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it amazes me. They're all connected. Now it comes through my computer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have an iWatch. My, I talk like James Bond in the, in the grocery store. Sometimes I'll forget my iPhone on purpose, and I'll be walking around talking in my wrist. Oh, geez. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's, no, it's pretty it's kind of cool, right? Kind of cool and creepy at the same time. Cool and creepy. <laughs> Vitamin water on aisle five. Go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Come on. We got about a minute to go. I'm still not live on Facebook. I'm still waiting. Ugh. Either way, that's going to be recorded. It's this gonna... live here. Yeah, it says live, but the browser's not live yet. Oh, got it. Yeah, you got to go through a process of, you know, saying yes, put it on this page. Yes, I'm going to share live now. We still got a minute to go, so we're going to be doing good here. Uh, but I'm recording anyways. And, oh, yes, okay, stand by. We're going to go live in a minute. So just keep your happy face on now, okay? I'm going to press go live in just a second. There it is. All right, let me see. Get the preview, fetching video stream. This can take a few seconds. Well, of course it can. All right, here we go. I'm going live on Facebook now, so smile. You're live. <laughs> and on TuneIn.com, Hang.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to the Bad Girl's Guide to Living Well with Heather Dowen. 
NMD. Spend time with Dr. Heather and her guests for tales of love, adventure, and how to be healthy and happy. Now, here's your host, Dr. Heather Dowen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bad Girl's Guide to Living Well. Today, I have Dr. Greg Eckel on, and his purpose is to help as many people as he can achieve optimal wellness using integrative care. Um, we are a podcast associated with naturopathicmd.com, where you can learn more about functional medicine and get tests and supplementation, etc. So we do a lot of virtual long-distance care, but Dr. Eckel is one of the people that you definitely want to have in your back pocket for certain things if you need on-site care. And he is an expert in neurological diseases, and we're going to be talking about a lot about today, that today. So he utilizes a blend of Eastern and Western medicine to find the right balance, and he meets you where you are to get optimum results, which is one of my favorite parts, because if you don't meet people where they are, you can tell them all day long that they need to do certain things, and if they don't do it, then that's worthless, right? So this is a story about love. Um, and we don't have a whole lot about love on very often, but um, Dr. Eccles' life path has led him to become an expert in chronic neurodegenerative diseases, including Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, dementias, and Alzheimer's. Um, with the recent passing of his wife, Soraya, from creutzfeldt jakob disease, which is a prion disease and is currently an incurable disease, he knows firsthand the travails of caring for and living with chronic neurodegenerative disease. During that process, he uncovered insights, patterns, and therapies that many can benefit from, and it is his um, passion to do so. So Dr. Eckel is a heart-centered physician, always striving for the cutting edge of the therapeutics and results. He's sought after for lecturing and educating other clinicians and the public. So we're very lucky to have him today. And thank you for joining us, Dr. Greg Eckel. Thank you for having me on. That's a good introduction, right? That was amazing. I'm very, very happy to have you. So thank you for making time for us today because oh. this is a huge piece of um, hope for medicine, I guess, and hope for people. Um, can you tell me a little bit, before we get into the nuts and bolts of it, we want to know a little bit more about you as far as like, how did you get into naturopathic medicine? You know, I was a, a preschool teacher in Portland, Oregon. I was in a Montessori Earth School uh, teaching three to six year olds. And I, you know, in the early nineties, it was the advent. It was kind of the beginning of the diagnosis of attention deficit disorder. And I watched all of these children being put on Ritalin at that point. And I just thought, gosh, there has got to be a better way to help these kids. And, uh, I have the, my poster child was, his name was Michael. And I like to say Michael included many others in his learning. He was the, yeah, he was the wild guy, you know, out, he was up and around. And if you've ever been in a Montessori classroom, you know, the kids are encouraged to get up, pick their work, they're self-directed, you know, and Michael would flit around and the head teacher, you know, it was just, it was a little disruptive to the other kids. And so the head teacher advocated to the parents like, hey, you should take him in, uh, maybe get him check it, check this diagnosis out. Lo and behold, he got diagnosed with attention deficit disorder, came in on Ritalin and just sucked the life out of him. I mean, he was slumped over in his chair. He stayed in his chair, but the, that little shining light was gone. And that just led me to, you know, basically go to the college. So in Portland, Oregon, we've got the oldest and best naturopathic Whoa. school. I'll put that out there. Uh, <laughs> all of the other colleges were formed by graduates of NCNM or now new. Um, so just a little jab for uh, the doc there. Uh, so, um, but, you know, I was a junk food vegetarian and my friends, um, you know, in my early 20s and uh, all of these paths led me to the naturopathic school. And I thought, wow, I can really get behind a medicine that all they did was really address my diet. Uh, and I felt a ton better. And I always knew if I went back to school, I wanted to be in service to people. And it just, uh, so many paths led me to naturopathic school, but you know, I really carried Michael as my, um, kind of my motivation during those hard years of, uh, academia. Yeah. Do you still treat that? today? I do. I do. You know, a lot less so as over the last 18 years of clinical practice, the, you know, it takes you in a lot of different routes. Um, you know, children are still near and dear to my heart. Um, I have five, uh, <laughs> and, uh, your halo. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it, um, 
but so I do. I actually do. I saw a child two weeks ago with attention deficit disorder um, perceived. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different routes that we help those kids, but it's not the main focus of my practice these days. I yeah. see. So let's talk about what the main focus of your practice is, and it's largely more chronic neurodegenerative diseases, correct? Yeah, we um, kind of evolved into that, as you said in your intro. Um, I recently, you know, really, really recent, has have lost my wife, and um, it was after about an 18 month stint of going through this process. And you know, I've always been fascinated by neurology. I wrote my doctoral thesis on actually allergies and asthma and the immune system. But that actually came full circle in this last 18 month period of looking how immune system affects brain function and um, different ways to get at healing the brain. Um, so it really, um, you know, I've been doing a ton of naturopathic, you know, in Oregon with primary care and have a really great broad scope of practice have a destination clinic at Nature Cures Clinic. It's right downtown Portland. So, you know, we get a, a bit of medical tourism going on because we have such a great uh, restaurant scene and food and, you know, the, the, it's a really great city to be in. Um, and we're right downtown. But uh, the, the neurology component has always been a kind of a mainstay of my practice. I uh, used to do a lot of neurofeedback. I got into neurofeedback actually with treating the children with attentional issues and you know, really um, providing that feedback to the brain. Um, I had to spin that out though, it was too many beeps and buzzers and computer screens, um, but it's a still great, um, great technique. But so I've been doing brain research and studying the brain neurology, uh, the mind, and just even kind of metaphysically, it all kind of ties together oh, here. I love it, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. So we, um, you know, I, so I put it all, um, just this last, 18 months really has really split me wide open um, as a practitioner, as a person on the planet, you know, losing, uh, you know, I might get a little choked up here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, that's all right. It's, um, you know, the component of grief and grieving, we don't really do that well as a culture either. So when you introduce it as a great love story, it really is, you know, I had found the love of my life and uh, we blended our families together and, you know, she uh, kind of checked out a little too early but amazing being my wife, Soraya, she was also a practitioner. She was a certified nurse midwife, nurse practitioner, uh, really radical feminist female healthcare provider. So we, we did that kind of dual um, East meets West. I was the more conservative looking, uh, but she was the one with the dreadlocks on her head. So, um, you know, she provided the conventional medicine and I did more <laughs> the naturopathic and Chinese medicine. Yeah. So the, the, the neurology component really, uh, it has fascinated me from the beginning, just even in school. And it's, you know, multifactorial. When I, when I really think about it, it, I look at it at a genetic level, a physical level, emotional level, and almost spiritual level. I don't really like to, you know, the spiritual, once you say that word, it kind of turns off a good portion of the population. I said it here, so hopefully you don't glaze over or check out. Um, but it is, there's a piece out there, right, um, that we can bring in and whatever that word means for you um, is the way that I approach that with folks. Well, I think that there's plenty of research out there, even if you get to the point where you're talking about repetition and visualization in sports, right? Yeah. The brain oh, yeah. Cannot, the, the brain cannot determine the difference between what you are seeing from your eyes yeah. and what yeah. you are visualizing. And there's tremendous power in that. And we're seeing... I just, I, I have trouble, and I know spiritual holds a lot of, yeah. you know, connotations for some of us that, yeah. you know, steam when we walk into churches and, and such, sure. but <laughs> I think that that piece of mystery that animates us yeah. can't be, it cannot be underemphasized in sure. wellness. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. And, you know, as we get more into quantum uh, computing and mathematics and just quantum physics you know it is an interesting it looks like they're coming back together here so they have to yeah and the mystery that's the way i've talked about it for the last 18 years in practice with patients too is you know it's amazing how much information we know about the biochemistry and physiology of the body but really i mean it's we we don't really understand what the hell's going on no, you we know? really don't 
Yeah, we can go in depth and geek out on that. And I love doing all of that. Don't get me wrong. Um, but then that mystery component is, um, it really needs to come back into the dialogue. And really treating, I guess one thing, uh, you know, just to bring into the discussion is, you know, I don't treat pieces or parts of people. I treat whole centered dynamic beings moving through time and space. And so that's the beauty of the way that we practice is we actually see and listen to people. And, you know, you can have, you can be the expert on the biochemistry or the physiology or the, you know, pharmacology of the different processes, but really we are greater than the sum of our parts. And really to understand that and treat people that way, it, number one, it's refreshing. Two, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and the results that you get really looking at the whole being and, you know, and understanding that it's all a symphony together is that's the part that really makes our medicine fly. And I think that was one of the best descriptions of what true holistic medicine is <laughs> that I've ever heard. Well, thank you. Yeah. Right? I mean, because <laughs> working on that. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. So. I think it's a beautiful thing to look at how we, I mean, there's also, there's always a niche that we're supposed to occupy, right? Like yeah. you're currently looking more into neurology. Like I'm yeah. currently doing more with, you know, sports medicine. However, like you said earlier, allergies and asthma, yeah. both of those things yeah. affect what we do day to day. So with our fundamentals, as far as like how we treat people and what we support in them, yeah. it affects every system of the body. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, it's that those basics, kind of the naturopathic principles and the basics of, of physiology and life. I was actually just watching a longevity uh, discussion and you know, the basics are you have to eat well, you have to rest and sleep well, uh, and move your body. I mean, those, it, it's not sexy, uh, you know. And but, there's no and then, pill that'll do any of those things for you. Well, I actually have this purple pill now. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. The, um, so, you know, one of the things that I found in the Parkinson's and neurology, so I really have narrowed, kind of scoped down a bit. So, you know, to, when we talk about niching down and mm -hmm. uh, looking at specific processes and I'm actually in the process of writing a book on Parkinson's. Um, so that's coming out hopefully in this next six month period. Oh, great. Um, the, I've just found, you know, so many folks, there's nothing that really, you know, in these chronic neurodegenerations, there's no solution, right? So in particular, you know, Soraya had this really rare one in a million, 300 cases in North America disease process. Uh, off of prions, uh, these misfolded proteins, right? Kind of archaic structures. You'll hear more about them now that we've said them and we're gonna talk about them a little bit here. Um, you'll see them, they're implicated in uh, anxiety, Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's. And we're not really, there's not a great test in the United States. Now I'm looking to bring in, so first evaluation is kind of the starting spot for any of these conditions. And there's a nasal swab that they use in Italy, the Netherlands, and Japan. 95% accurate and specific. Um, you know, you can swab right near the cribriform process up in the nasal passageway for prions. And those, these were just discovered in 1997. Staniel Prusiner down at UCSF, who I've been in conversation with, him and Del Bredesen, they actually were in the same lab. So Bredesen does a lot with Alzheimer's yeah. research. Uh, has the Bredesen protocol, yep. um, basically doing naturopathic principles with people through diet and bringing back their health. No, I loved it. He wrote the um, the end of Alzheimer's, and when I yes. read it, I just I felt like a little bit in love with him, just because he was able to take what we do and put yes. it on a stage, and then actually reverse the signs of dementia in six Alzheimer's patients out of UCLA, oh. which is huge. And he's yes. He's doing naturopathic pr principles. So I, I yeah, just love I love it. it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Right. That integrative approach, which is yeah. really meeting people where they're at and bringing it all together. So the, I, it's awesome. And he actually sent me a paper on the prions are implicated in, you know, all of these conditions. And I'm we're not, not even looking for them in this country, right? Right now, the current diagnosis is you've got to do an uh, cerebral spinal fluid. So you've got to do a spinal tap. People are not electively going in for a spinal tap. It's a super painful, invasive procedure. 
um, no fun, and it's not even it's not even definitive at that point. Right. So um, you know we need to look for these things, but that's a piece. So we're I'm looking actually at bringing those that into this country, and you know it's not FDA approved, but just to kind of fast track it because it would be nice to have that clinically for clinicians in their offices just to screen to know. Now, unfortunately, if it comes back positive, I think that's the issue is there aren't a lot of therapies, right? Right. Um, so I've, I actually found two substances that help with this. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about those later. So I'll just prime the pump there. Okay, good. So on um, other things that I look at that in chronic neurodegeneration and specifically for Parkinson's, uh, heavy metal burden. So, uh, we, we had, uh, there was a YouTube video put out on for Parkinson's patients on a glutathione push. David Perlmutter, uh, functional neurologist out of Florida. I don't think he's practicing anymore, but maybe 15 years ago, did a glutathione push, put it on YouTube, and it showed a gentleman with um, kind of the stutter step gait of Parkinsonism. And did the push and his, he had nice fluid, long walking, right? And then, you know, Dr. Per, uh, Perlmutter was saying, you know, it wore off, it wore off. And so I saw that I started doing it immediately in my clinic and it didn't work for anybody. I was like, I what is this? <laughs> yeah, I was like, taking the dose higher and higher. And then I was like, this isn't even, I just, I couldn't reproduce it either. Yeah. And I thought, did he have a hired, you know, patient or something like, what was that? But I started testing for heavy metals on those folks and found Oh, actually, well, you know, lo and behold, in a naturopathic clinic called Nature Cures, I'm seeing the, you know, the tough of the tough cases. So they've already been through kind of the medical mill. Right. And what was not looked at was their metal burden. And you, we know we store metals in our fat. Um, we could call each other fat heads, right? Uh, around all of our nerves, we've got all of that fat. Right. So looking at it, um, cadmium, arsenic, lead, mercury were the top four that I saw coming out of these folks. So you got to, you know, any neurological condition, you got to start with that um, is the metal testing. So just to be clear for people, because we do have clinicians that listen, but also obviously public. And so mm -hmm. why, or can you tell me what the best test that you run for heavy metals would be and why? Sure. Yeah. There, there, so there's an agreed upon in our um, naturopathic environmental medicine um, branches, we've come up with some protocols that we all agree to. Um, and you do a pre and a post test. Uh, you, you do a pre-test, which is just collect your urine in the morning before you do anything. One, you want to rule out that you don't have any acute exposures to any of these metals uh, in your drinking water. You know, there's a potter out back that's doing these leaded glazes, and which still occurs. Um, a lot of fish. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of fish, right. Or even just a general little <laughs> bit, <laughs> right. Our planet, we know uh, we all have heavy metals in North America. Um, when I, well, yeah, I'll get back to that one. So really, and then you do an IV challenge test. I like the IV challenge test. I see a lot of folks that come to me with a hair analysis. It's a little easier, less invasive, but there is a genetic component. People are not excreting metals through their hair. And I, I just don't find it to correlate to anything. Me neither. Um, so I like the metal test, the metal challenge test. And so on people might be thinking, well, where did they get the metals? Right? So I live here in the lovely Northwest. Uh, we get this plume of dust from China every year. They're doing coal-fired plants there. Comes down on in the rain here in the Northwest. Northeast uh, is the acid rain from the Midwest uh, coal-fired plants. You know, it's in our fish. It's it's ubiquitous in our environment. So when I first learned about this uh, metal burden and people, I was testing everybody, and lo and behold, it was coming back for everybody. Um, and so I had to stop that because it's a can of worms of well. Is it causing you your health problem? So I did draw the line, though, for neurological issues. It may be. So we need to really rule that out. Right. I yeah. usually do heavy metal testing kind of as I've peeled the other layers back. And if people yeah. aren't getting, like, the results that they really that are you're anticipating. For, and it's like, because some people, I think, deal quite well with it. Right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Genetically, their genetic picture is, like, yeah. you can – deal with the level of toxicity, you've evolved and good for you, right? <laughs> right. Well, in this way, right? Because, right. you know, who knows what, what's other, you know, other derangement of right. 
but um, I I did a lot of I studied with Dr. Bill Ray in oh great in yeah Dallas and he yeah. was one of the guys that did um, some of the first heart transplants and I his son told me the story about how one of the kids had terrible allergies and he got to thinking huh if we have to control for all of the chemicals during surgery when we're doing this how do we not control for all of the chemicals everywhere i mean yeah. they're everywhere we get them in california i was talking to someone that worked for the epa and he's saying that when the trees burn yeah it comes down in rain and then fills our aquifers up and our water plants can't get it out wow yeah even more so right everywhere. so you know it, it can get really depressing quickly when you talk about this yes but, but but on the bigger piece of it like you're saying is like genetically some of us can tolerate more Right. Um, and also, I, I think we don't really realize how powerful we are as humans and what we're capable of. Right. And so there is that, um, you know, coming from authority figures and or physicians saying like, we're damned, you know, it can be like 10 times worse. Yeah. There is a reality of the discussion of like, yeah, we got to wake up like the planet. It's us. We're just toxing us. You know, as an undergrad, I studied environmental studies, and I always thought, why are we talking about save the whales? It's really save the humans. Like we are, if we don't wake up and do something about this, we're we're in be, you know, we're in some doo doo. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're seeing it everywhere. I think that yeah. you know, whatever the toxic load is, not just heavy metals. I think heavy metals are especially problematic for the neurological system and the brain, obviously, because they love fat so much and they get yeah. stuck in there. They can cross the blood brain barrier without too much of a problem as well. Right. And so we hold, we reserve them and like save them in these places where we're most vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's the body's inherent ability to heal itself. It's like, Oh, let's get those out of circulation, put them in the fat, you know, yep. store it in the fat. So that, you know, you look at the fat reservoir of the brain, there's a big one up there to just put stuff into. So that's one that I found in neurological conditions. If you've got a Parkinson's diagnosis or a loved one, that definitely needs to get ruled out. Um, the other big one are chronic viral illnesses that, are, you know, the person doesn't feel sick, but they've got Epstein-Barr, herpes simplex, cytomegalovirus that are just circulating at low levels, enough of a, a component to just play havoc with our innate ability to heal and distract us, make us tired, etc. Right, which is also sort of like molds. I think I've seen... Yeah a lot of stuff with mold neurologically too. Yes. Um, and really whatever it is that makes your body less able to handle whatever the stress is that's coming to it, you know, that's where we start to see disease, I think. Totally. Yeah. When your cup is full, it runneth over. That's where the symptoms come in. And at that point, it's a little bit like maybe a bit too late. Like we really want to prevent that from happening. Oh, no kidding. You know, yeah. Um, so on, on the diagnostic front, those are the big ones. Um, the third component that I find goes overlooked with this, in particular Parkinson's, Parkinson's is called the hypothyroidism of the brain. And a, a good portion, I just spoke at a Parkinson's support group on Tuesday night um, and you know, did a show of hands, about 60% of them were on some type of thyroid medication. And so again, it's not for everybody, but it is something to be looked at right. for sure. And that's the beauty of what we do because we follow that path and put that puzzle together to figure out like if it's not metals for someone, I mean, I, obviously it is at some point or like inflammatory or, um, you know, thyroid, you know, right. what is it? And so hormones, that's right. hormones. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so those in a true evaluation, kind of more of that holistic component, you know, we're really trying to pinpoint what's right for this individual here in front of us. So that's more on, you know, that what I just laid out there is more biochemical, uh, biochemistry, physiologic treatments. And, you know, that is a component of it. Now, now tell me about the really stu cool stuff. Yes. <laughs> so that, that's where we're going here in our discussion. So, you know, a piece of it, um, because I've gone through, I like you just, you're rolling up your sleeves. I like no, it. I love it. Yeah. Um, we're, uh, you know, looking at um, one prevention, you know, it's like, how did this ever happen to, uh, to my wife? How did this get activated? Where did it come from? Um, but two, then, you know, I start asking my patients the same questions around, 
um, it, this, the path that I was on, I started going down through, okay, well, early childhood trauma. So I uncovered, uh, it's called Germanic New Medicine, Dr. Hammer out of Europe, um, which is the pleomorphics or bio, um, the, uh, the biologics of kind of the combination homeopathics to okay. detox the body. Uh, Dr. Hammer was expelled out of Germany, had to live in the Netherlands because of his thesis was on this trauma causes disease process. Um, and, you know, of course, in true scientific method, they threw him out of the country. Um, you know, for asking a question and proposing a thesis, a hypothesis in a true scientific method, they wouldn't even listen to his paper. You know, so in our, you know, faux religious dogma of science that we have now, that I think a lot of us in the naturopathic community are waking up to like, wait a minute, they, the emperor wears no clothes here. Like we can just buy, we don't have to rail against that system. We just have to replace it. And that's what people are voting with their dollars and their, their choices on, you know what, we, we get it. Western medicine doesn't have the complete answer and they don't, they don't, they don't have the answer, right? Um, as far as I'd, I've seen. <laughs> I, I think that being rated 37th in the world for chronic he, care. Super telling, yeah, right. It, the proof is right there, right. And we spend whatever, 10 times more, well, it's ridiculous. And no one is ever expected to get better. Yeah, that is, and that is an awesome point of, uh, I always say, I always leave the door open for people to have a spontaneous remission, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't claim cure. I'm not, I actually do a lot of nothing all day. It's somebody's body and the medicine. These things come together and work. And my job is to remove the obstacles to cure. Right. So, <laughs> so, so many times I actually, in the first patient visit, I've got to erase that tape. I always ask people like, have you been given a prognosis or a, a timeline of this disease process. Um, you know, whether it be from depression of like, I have a biochemical imbalance in my brain, the doctor told me, it's like, there's no way you're deficient in SSRIs. So we need to get rid of that thought belief pattern because that is so uh, damning to an individual coming from a professional. Right. Um, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. It's like hypnotizing someone with that piece. Well, it's a nocebo, right? We've right. heard of the placebo, but the nocebo is a negative effect of a thought process or belief. So, and that's very powerful. It, it's a little bit off topic, but because of what you just said with SSRIs, in your research that you've been doing, have you seen um, associations between like the gross number of antidepressants and psych meds that we're prescribing and neurological degeneration? <laughs> You know, I actually have not come across that because of my niche was on in more in the regenerative medicine. Um, what Have you seen st some stats on that? I haven't seen stats on it. I read there was a book out a couple of years ago that I have had trouble finding a lot of the stuff since. Uh -huh. But it was showing how like when you keep messing with the neurotransmitter balance and you have deregulation wow. or like you've got, you know, less receptors then right. set ourselves up because i mean if you have like dopamine altering meds in the brain um, not ssris obviously right. but when you have um that sort of psych well change. yeah so cinemat and uh, so actually that so the the main medications prescribed for parkinson's are total symptomatic um, treatment and they wear off, they lose their effectiveness. And they actually, I really think they complicate the picture so much for people. Um, you know, Cinemat, Carbidopa, Levodopa, really manipulating dopamine um, levels. And it is so end, end change, symptomatic. It, we really need to go way upstream. And because that's the state of the art, right? That's like the penultimate Western approach is give these meds. Um, I find it's hard. It, one, it's hard to get people off of them without uh, complicating factors. And two, they, people come in after six or seven years and they're not effective. They're at the major dose. Now they're taking other medications and they, it's just really, um, it complicates matters, right? Again, I don't want to take choices away from patients. And if you're on them, by all means, stay on them until you get somebody to help get off of them safely. 
Um, or we can support you on them if that's your choice as well. Like we really do meet you where you're at. Um, but that is, that is such the, you know, more biochemical physiologic end product treatment where we're going though, is talking about this more energetic piece. So Dr. Hammer's work with this Germanic new medicine, um, you know, they found from zero to 18 months, 18 months to three years and three years to puberty, any traumas in those areas of life led to different neurologic conditions later. Um, and so it's pretty fascinating. I've got, a, you know, even in utero, so then this goes one, two or three steps deeper here. So in the utero, you know, so taking a full case and history for people is, okay, well, what was childbirth? What, what happened in the nine months in utero, right? Um, were there any trauma? So that would be on the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and endoderm, and where the, you know, as we developed and things unfolded and what level is the pathology in. Fascinating stuff. Then one extra level is you get in on that and you see then this intergenerational, like our great grandmothers. So you know, that curse of seven generations, it dawned on me in this last 18 months. It's like, oh, this is actually where it comes from. You know, our great grandmothers, any traumas or issues that happened there activated our, gen you know, turned on the genes that then are expressing today. So it has made my job as clinician so much harder uh, and way more complex and fascinating as well. So many of us don't know our family lineage and don't know three generations back, maybe one, maybe two if we're lucky. Um, you know, the advent of the genetic testing. Um, so we bring that in here. Um, to look at, you know, it's not your genes aren't your destiny, but it is the operating system that we're working with. They may or may not be on, but if you have some SNPs or deficiencies of pathways, we want to know that because then we can tailor the therapies that we put in for you. So we can really individualize that plan and program. I, I, I use, and I'm not sure if you do, but the Opus 23 is one of the best programs that I use for that. You take the raw data from 23andMe and Ancestry, and it's um, Peter uh, Diadamo of the blood type fame. His opus is this major program where um, he's got the three major institutions. All, they're always uploading their new research into it, and it really brings the raw data alive. So, you know, what used to be like a $10,000 test now, you know, you get the raw data and upload it in there, and it really comes alive. I haven't yeah. used that. I yeah. haven't used that. That looks really good. I've been doing, I haven't done a whole lot of training in, in genomics. The one yeah. that I've been doing is called Nutrition Genome. Okay. And it kind of breaks it down and it makes it really beautiful um, as far as what you can eat and what nutrients specifically you can use to strengthen ah. the snips that they do find. So I find yeah. that like the patients have a good, like almost a map and it's yeah. not as extensive, it doesn't sound like, but I think it's a good place for a lot of people just to start. It's great, yeah. I mean, you can get overwhelmed in that whole thing. And that's, the, that's a little bit of the problem with it is, is because it, you don't know if it's an issue or not. You just right. know you have the deficiencies in those pathways. And so they may or may not be playing. And, you know, it's like you, I start really meta with people. And then the other nice thing about it is then you can go over and go back into the program and they've uploaded it with the new research. That's so fantastic. It's lovely. That's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So you do all of this physiological, you know, strengthening of the system with you yeah. know, nutrition and other, you know, taking away the obstacles to cure. Right. So then you also do a really phenomenal um, therapy as well using stem cells that I would love to hear about. Yes. So the regenerative medicines. So one of the things, you know, again, so I'm looking for, there's no known cure for Kurtzfeldt-Jacob disease. And uh, I got in onto regenerative medicine and stem cells. And the, they are phenomenal. And you look at the amount of research, and I just realized, like, wait a minute, this is way too amazing to not start educating people about. Because they, there is tons of research. So that's the biggest thing. I actually you know, uh, was going on television on Tuesday as well. And a nurse practitioner sitting next to me said, well, uh, you know, there's not enough data on that. 
And I just looked at her and I said, are, do you not read journals? Like, what are you telling? I love what? your style. <laughs> there all, there's like tidal waves of research. In Europe, they've been studying it. You know, we got cut off in the United States in 91 for religious reasons, which were absurd and really put us way behind the world in researching what I call miraculous healing units. The stem cells, they come in, um, so what are stem cells? The, these come from umbilical and amniotic fluid. They're ethically harvested from moms that had C-sections. They donate the tissue that used to be medical waste. We just used to throw this out. Like, oh, there's the, that, that's done its job. We're done with it. Well, lo and behold, there are these very potent messengers in there that help our bodies heal. Go figure. We're growing a baby, Right. Um, so there is, it's phenomenal. These stem cell banks are well regulated by the FDA in this country. This is not an FDA approved treatment as of yet. People had to go down to Panama, you know, go over to Germany, go over to Thailand. But now we can use the mesocobol, uh stem cells, MSCs. Um, we just call them stem cells for short. And they, you know, they will differentiate and help your body regrow cartilage, neurons for your brain, um, epithelial lining for your gut, bones. Uh, you know, they are phenomenal. And they only know this. So when I first started studying it, I thought that the cell became us, which is a little bit weird, but that's not what happens. So, um, so that's not what happens. What these do, they come in, and I call them like the conductor of our, uh, our own innate healing symphony. And they help coordinate. They'll donate pieces and parts. They'll donate mitochondria. They secrete what really how they work is they secrete uh, an exosome, these healing properties of our own body to use to repair. Um, there's actually a concept of longevity is when you have no more stem cells, you die, right? And they decrease throughout time. So, you know, average 35-year-old, one stem cell in 30 days will make... Um, about 32,000 cells. A 65 year old, one stem cell will make about 200 stem cells uh, in 30 days. So you can see as we age, they just go right down. I, um, I really like using the new ones, right? So we get them from, their, from the stem cell banks uh, and they're, um, they're about one milliliter, you get about a one and a half to two million cells in there and we inject that. Um, I actually had the procedure done for me. I did an intranasal procedure, and I think that's how we got talking the other day um, around um, longevity, you know, for hearing and eye uh, loss, and um, it's got a systemic anti-inflammatory benefit. Um, I was using it really um, came out of uh, the International Neonatal Stem Cell Conference, which talk about a niche, that's a niche. Um, they're studying it in Italy and uh, Spain for the use of neonatal stroke rehab. So babies in utero having strokes in the past have been just chronically debilitated. Now they're actually using the stem cells from from them from themselves from their umbilical cord and, uh, and placenta and going intranasally. So you bypass the blood brain barrier and you get them right into central nervous system. And within 10 minutes, they're in there because the studies and research shows it's in the cerebral spinal fluid via intranasal procedure. Uh, it's a flexible catheter, no needle um, there. People don't like to hear needle and uh, head or nose. Um, so we, um, we put them right in and uh, just getting phenomenal results for patients. I've got um, folks with the Parkinson's diagnosis. Their speech gets better. You know, one gentleman just, he said, um, you know, his coworkers, their jaws drop. Like, what are you doing? Like, we can understand you, um, you know, because sometimes the, the speech gets a little slurred. Um, you know, no, I, I, again, I'm not going to claim cure on what we're doing, but definitely improvement of quality of life, um, slowing or stopping of symptoms. Right. Well, I mean, because what they say, uh, life is a sexually transmitted fatal disease, right? So, <laughs> right. so there yes. isn't a cure for anything. It's like, how do you have that quality of life to the optimum yeah. that you possibly can right. while holding whatever, you know, whatever processes that are destroying us at bay? 
That's why I yeah, call it yeah. the bad girl's guide to living well, right? So that you can have a little bit of fun, live on the planet, not freak out about heavy metals killing us, pesticides yes. killing us, cheeseburgers killing us, and just be able to make the body stronger and healthier so you can have fun and yet Love not it. destroy the process of, of your health. Perfect. I love that. I was wondering why you called it the bad girl's guide. Yeah. That's well, because, great. you know, I like to have a little bit of wine and I like to, you know, stay up late yeah. and party and, you know. That's very sustainable. It's, yeah. And it's not, you know, what? I hit a certain age and I'm like, I am not recuperating as well <laughs> as I used to. Plus, you know, I'm, I'm a generation X, right? And some of yeah. the sickest people that I see in practice are younger than me. Yeah. And so like that piece of like, why are we having 20 year old women be infertile, right? Yeah. Like, how is this, you know, this youth that's supposed to insulate us? How do we protect that next generation? Because if you're looking back seven generations, or I think I've read somewhere 19, you can see stress genetically 19 generations wow. back. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. I mean, that's a long ass time ago. <laughs> so that is. Like, that is. So if you can do stuff, you know, preventatively while insulating from all of the craziness that was the process so the question i have is like with parkinson's and with neurodegeneration you know we always hit this end game right of cinnamon you know carbidopa levodopa yeah. and you know That's good it. luck it'll probably last you three to five years maybe and yeah. right so is there a way besides because there's some genetic stuff that you can look at i believe but is there yeah. a way to make more of a prediction so that there's a longer period of time in order to do prevention that is the million dollar question so you know if we had um uh, that's what i'm going after that's you know after just being in the research really in depth for this last year so right so here coming back to i said i was going to come back to this on the prions um the the testing i think so what if what if it is a prionic disease like what if this is really that's the case and there's no known cure for that as of yet now there are two substances possibly three um actually there are three uh so dmso uh which i'm lecturing on at the end of this month to a group of physicians um has been shown to move the prions out of the central nervous system. So DMSO is one of those. Um, the second one is HOCl, which is anhydrous chloride, a fascinating cheap substance. Um, I discovered this, a patient brought it to my attention. They have about $2 million of NIH research um, that shows that HOCl, anhydrous chloride, which is what our own immune system secretes around viruses and bacteria to kill them, um, deactivates prions. And they're using this substance really in, um, on surgical equipment and in uh, crematoriums of all places. But you can buy this stuff on Amazon. It's like a, it smells like pool water. I had my kids you know, um, tasting it, and we were giving it to Sarai as well. I was taking it, I actually carried it in my clinic. I created a, a DMSO HOCL nasal spray because, you know, if I'm testing here for prions and I want to get it into the brain, this is the best route for that. Um, so I put two of the known substances together in a nasal spray, uh, which is also great as an aside for killing biofilms, uh, chronic sinusitis. Um, and any prevention of the early onset of any viral cold. <laughs> so can people get that from you for prevention? They can. They can. They definitely can. Yeah. So they, they could contact me um, at the website um, or send an email to info at naturecuresclinic.com. Currently working on the storefront. Um, we'll, be, we'll have that up on by hopefully by the end of the year here because if you think about it with all of the antibiotic use and our yeah. immune systems not working biofilms i mean yeah here from a you know one of our mutual friends that right. films have had millions of dollars dumped into them research military you know yeah research. well so this hocl similar it, you look at their it's called briotech their board of directors is the who's who of infectious disease in the world and dan terry the owner of the company he was the um he sold the original tech of the pentium processor to intel and his goal is to disrupt healthcare right <laughs> so the guy he's got kind of a good armament and a great mission i can really get behind that oh, yeah. you know topically 
you can spray this on infections. It'll clear MRSA in five days topically, right? right? So incredible uses, very versatile, 125 years of research. Now the third substance is NAD, which is kind of the flavor of the month, right? Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, I see the frowny face and we've been using it for a long time in the naturopathic community. Now, you know, the integrative community has caught on to the hot topic of NAD. Oh, right up there with vitamin D and probiotics. Welcome right. to the party, guys. Yeah, I know, really. Lovely. Yeah, so innovative. Um, so on that front is, uh, but there is a script research and bless her heart. She's been at it for 10 years and she's really focused on prions with the use of NAD. So I'm, I'm kind of in early discussions with her to see what she's finding there. And, and just so that people know, I mean, you've given three things that can, you know, disrupt them. Right. They are basically from my limited understanding, the hardest thing to kill that we have ever found. They're indestructible, right? You can't freeze them. You can't burn them. You, you know, they, don't, you can. Them them. Them. Yeah, no, no. So, and so, and that's the thing, you know, kind of on, even on that heavy metal discussion of like, don't get freaked out about this. These are, you know, because when I know really easy for me to say, right. Um, <laughs> but it is, uh, they're everywhere. So when you realize they're ubiquitous, when you actually read about them, they're always um, kind of dubbed infectious prions, which even makes it sound more sinister. Um, nobody knows what turns them on, though. And, you know, this is the same thing in mad cow disease for cattle, right? So in 85, there were 3 million pounds of tainted prionic mad cow beef released in Europe. That was 1985. We saw no uptick of this condition in Europe. So that's kind of interesting. So that kind of proposes possibly the genetic predisposition and I think a trauma level that tends to activate them. So you've got to have, I think, those two components together for it to be an issue. But what in what they do, they just congest in the central nervous system. That's where you get the breakdown of all of the functions of the body. Um, so they are ubiquitous. I feel like they're, are, they're an archaic protein structure because there is no genetic material in there, which makes them very weird. Um, you know, that's yeah. the technical term. No, they really are weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. And, you know, I, so looking at that, you know, um, they have to be ruled in or ruled out. Yep. So yeah. I know that there is a couple of things that can upregulate stem cells in the human body. Oh, yes. Right? But yeah. I think that, and I've done PRP therapies um, where we take stem cells and growth factors out of the blood and then inject them along connective tissue um, yeah. in order to regenerate for like sports injuries, you know, aesthetics and that sort of thing. Yes. But I think the ones that you're talking about are very different because they're younger. So if you take like a 65 year old stem cells, the yeah. Yeah, and that was the old procedure. So one way around this non-FDA regulation was autologous, yeah. you know, was autologous stem cell, which is pull cells from your fat and bone marrow and inject them back into you. Right. But at, at this point, it, that's kind of an archaic procedure in my book. Like, yeah. why would you do that? Like, you have damaged old stem cells that aren't there aren't many of, right. versus you can get these fresh new ones. You know. Yeah. One milliliter of your own is 200 uh, cells versus one and a half to two million cells of these new ones. Right. Like, let's just go with the new ones. You know, right. they're going to really help a ton. So you have a pretty comprehensive therapy that you've put together. You are a destination um, yes. as far as people being able to come from all over to get these services. So I'd yeah. love it if you talked a little bit more about what someone could expect with that or sure. in that process. Yeah, so um, we've got some great uh, arrangements with local uh, hotels for discounts. There's one, you know, really beautiful one across from a park a block away from the clinic. So people fly right into PDX and come downtown. You can even ride on the max get checked in and come up to the clinic. And I call it Camp Nature Cures. You know, we've put together, it's um, with the stem cell therapy, the intranasal and IV. We do hyperbaric oxygen. So people get 
uh, if you're coming in from afar, it's usually, you know, though people will come in for a week or two. So depending on the length of stay, we'll do two 90 minute sessions of hyperbaric oxygen with pulsed electromagnetic frequency and low level laser therapy, depending on what's specific for them. Uh, we'll do some acupuncture as well. I've got a great acupuncturist in the clinic. Acupuncture works on blood flow, also stimulates your own stem cells um, along those lines. We do nutrition therapy, Chinese herbs, nutraceuticals, brain health smoothies. Uh, you name it, we want to just supercharge your body and its own healing ability. Right, right. Yeah. Because I think that they're like, just to spell it out, if your body is healthy, and has what it needs to process. All of these things that we could make ourselves crazy about and never want to yeah. go out of the house again about aren't right. big of a deal. Right. Yeah, so right. You know, and that's, you know, we're not, I don't want to be, I'm not a fear-based practitioner at right. all. And so I love the the name, you know, your bad girl is like, yeah, that's sustainable. Like maybe do some liver detox <laughs> after your girl's night out, right? You know, like that's what you do. Or, uh, you know, a multivitamin mineral. We've had some, you know, local rock stars coming in after their concerts for those, you know, like that is very helpful. That's good medicine. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's sustainable. Um, so, you know, it really is individualized the treatment plan. So not everybody gets all of those therapies, but some people do. Depends on, you know, where at on the continuum somebody comes in. Um, we also do a lot with the family constellation work and that kind of past uh, component. Now, you know, one of the pieces, we didn't really get into the energetics of this. So next we did time. talk next time. We Perfect. need to do it next time. You gotta, yeah, gotta leave a little bit for next time. So that's, that's, and that's a big topic. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a huge topic. Yeah. Um, so how about MS or yes. Alzheimer's? Do you see those patients as well? I do. I do. Yeah. So on that whole uh, neurologic spectrum uh, kind of disorder. So for multiple sclerosis, a little bit more on the immune system. So that's where my, you know, doctoral thesis comes in a little bit more handy there of uh, desensitizing or reprogramming the immune system function as, you know, as possible autoimmune condition for the MS theory. Um, Definitely the heavy metals again in that realm. And the, and the stem cells in particular for helping with gait, uh, walking, muscle strength, um, along those lines. Yeah. So I, I have one more inflammatory question before we go. Um, I love I'm inflammatory so questions. I have a, I have a uh, vendetta against statin drugs. Okay. Um, I think that they very well may be the worst thing to happen in medicine in the last 50 years. Nice. Yeah. And I've seen research showing that statin drug use significantly increases the likelihood of getting Parkinson's. And there's, uh -huh. have you seen that? Yes. And, you know, I think they're known mitochondrial toxins, right? So that, it, I'm with you, they don't really make a lot of sense at all. They're, it's not on the cholesterol lowering ability, like half the population is on them and cardiovascular disease is still the number one killer. You know, so they're not, it doesn't really work that way. It sells a lot of drugs by lowering cholesterol levels and changing the regulation of what's acceptable. Um, you know, again, you look at, or why are we giving the body a known toxin? Right. And, and I think that's that's really what's at play there. Yeah. You're looking at, you know, we can manipulate cholesterol, but it's not it really has to improve somebody's life. Right. And, and we're not seeing it. You're not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. The patients aren't seeing it. No. So how do people find you? Can you give us your uh, <laughs> web address again? And yes. so it's naturecuresclinic.com. So it's nature singular cures with an S clinic.com a mouthful. Uh, but you do, if you, if you can do Nature Cures Portland, Oregon, or Dr. Echo Portland, Oregon, and we'll come up big right there. Well, I am so happy to have had you on today, and I do want to talk about that energetic piece, and I would love, awesome. we should do like a round robin with it, because it's, oh, that would be it's fun. part of medicine that's completely ignored, I think. So yeah. next week, we're actually doing research, or dream research. Oh, having cool. a woman that wrote a, a book about that so thank you this has been the bad oh. girl's guide to living well and um i'll see you next week friday at two thank you dr echo and we'll see you soon thank you you've Take been care. listening to the bad girl's guide to living well 
Join Dr. Heather and her special guests every Friday at 2 p.m. For more information. Okay, and you're clear. That was I great, got, Greg. I, I could have gone on for so long. Off. That was you great. I loved it. Off. You guys can go ahead and finish off. I got to get off, and uh, uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Right, bye. bye. <laughs> Thanks, Heather. That was so much fun. I'm glad.